Hello everyone, Vita's a pretty to back here with another how to play. Today we're looking at how to play Ecosystem Coral Reef. And a big shout out and thank you to these guys, Genius Games, for sending me this one. I do appreciate that. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be more in the future. It is designed by Matt Simpson. Genius Games is um, known for putting out these great scientifically based games. I've got others that I'll be covering next year on the channel, like Ion and Verulance, I believe, is from them as well. And it is a follow-up to this game, the original one, Ecosystem, which is more, you know, forest-based. This one is underwater-based, as you can probably guess. Now, it does play basically the same as the original game. <clears throat> so, I'll get into that. It is for... Ages 8 and up, 2 to 6 players. Actually, I've seen on Board Game Geek that apparently you can play solo, but it's not what it indicates here. You get 130 cards, a 6 player age, and a score pad, and a rule book. It's very nice. Um, <clears throat> and what you're trying to do is build an ecosystem that will give you as many points as possible. Now, these are some nice artwork. These are the player aids. And they tell you how the different cards score. So the corals, you'll get three points if they are in the bottom row. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be drafting cards and building a 4x5 grid, I believe it is. You're going to be getting, each player is going to be dealt 10 cards to start off with. You're going to be selecting one card from your hand. And then you're going to be passing the rest to your opponent. On your left, I believe. And, you know, the players will be passing cards around, very much like Susie Go. And then you get nine cards, and then you get to draft a card from that, pass them along, and you get eight cards, and you repeat. Once you've gone through those ten cards, then you're going to deal out ten more cards, and you're going to do that all over again, until you have a four-by-five grid. So the coral, they will get you three points for each one that is in the bottom row. The krill, you get... Points for having connected groups. So if you have one curl, you get one point. If you get two next to each other, you get four points. If you get three, you get nine points. The plankton is whoever has the majority gets 12 points, eight points, and four points for the third most. Grouper, you get three points for each one that is next to a krill, adjacent to a krill. The clownfish, two points for each one that is adjacent to a plankton or a coral. Crab, you get two points for each plankton that is in the same row as a crab. Eel, you have four points for each one that is adjacent to any fish, only if an eel is adjacent to a coral. So, you get if it's adjacent to any of these fish, you get four points for that, but only if it is adjacent to a coral. So, you gotta keep all of this in mind when you're laying cards out. I put this one here or there or somewhere else and then you got the sarks two points for each that is in the same row as a for each fist that is in the same row or column the whales you, before scoring you flip one adjacent card down and you get two points for each krill in your ecosystem and then you got the turtle you get two points for each row and column containing at least one turtle and there's 12 of those. As you can see, it says on the card how many there is of each. And the octopus, you get three points. When played, you may immediately move one card or swamp two cards. And you will also score a bonus if you have, for the food web, equal to the lowest totals of either this type, this type, or that type. That's interesting. So you can see you have different types of this and so forth <clears throat> cards. Very nice. And very nice artwork, of course. Um, I will try my best to shuffle these up here. There's a lot of them. They are pretty small. I think they're a little bit bigger than last time, maybe. Maybe they're the same size. Probably the same size, but I don't recall. They're just a little bit bigger than, like, a mini 
bicycle deck of cards. Just a little bit. <clears throat> they are not embossed with just a plastic finish, smooth plastic coated finish. I play with the score pad. Let's see where you mark everything. You got producers, preys, predators, and then the food web, and trolls and octopuses, and all the other types. So it's pretty cool. And <clears throat> we'll just pretend we're playing with two players here. The instructions, by the way, are fairly straightforward. Pretty nice. So each player is going to get a player aid, you shuffle the decks, deal 10 cards to each player for round one, and then the rest of the cards stay for round two. So I'll just put these aside. <clears throat> and we each have 10 cards. So I'm gonna look at these, and I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm going to take this one. I'll play it face down. My opponent's gonna do the same thing. Let's say they take this one, and other players will do the same thing. There's more than two. We didn't reveal them at the same time, and play somewhere we want. I'm gonna put this at the bottom since that's what's best, and then we we'll pass the cards to each other, and we do the same thing. Um. I'm going to look at my play rate here, see what works good with the call, <laughs> perhaps. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to take that, my opponent's going to take something, we pass the cards to each other, flip them over, they're going to play the call at the bottom. And I'm going to play this uh, adjacent to the call. And then we're going to do the same thing again. And maybe I take a, a shark this time. And they take whatever. We flip them over at the same time. We're going to play this here, perhaps. I'm going to play this here. And we pass again. I'm going to continue doing this until you've gone through all 10 cards. And you're going to have a nice grid. And then... You're going to deal out 10 more cards and do that again. I will just say, you know, we'll just, I'm just going to set up something here quickly. And we'll see how the scoring works and how good I did. Just kind of randomly. All right. That's my, that's not a four by five. <laughs> and anything I'm missing well a, a crab <laughs> all right so we'll say this is what I ended up with just for the hell of it so then we're gonna look at the scoring <clears throat> So for a coral, I get three points if it's on the bottom row for each one, and I got three, so I'm going to get nine points for that. The krill, uh, we get points for connected groups of krill. Uh, I do have these two connected. If I had a third one here, that would still be connected. But in this case, I get two like, that. Eh, we'll do this. So in this case, I would get three for a free connected krill. You cannot do it diagonally, just horizontally and vertically. So in this case, I got three, I would get nine points for that. The plankton, uh, whoever has the majority, is gonna get the most points. We'll say I have the majority. Well, maybe I don't, I got two. We'll say I have less, so I'm gonna get eight points. I'll get 12 points, perhaps. 
Grouper. Three points for each that's adjacent to a quill. I do not have any that's adjacent to a quill, so I don't get that. A columnist, two points for each one that's adjacent to a plankton or a coral. Um, I'll take a look at what the plankton looks like here. <laughs> okay, well, I do get this one that's adjacent to a plankton, and that is it, so I get two points for that. Crab, I get two points for each one that's for each plankton that is in the same row. And I do have this plankton in the same row as this crab, so I get that. There's none going this way. Actually, it's only for the row. As you can see right here, just the row, not the cone. So I do get the points for that. My apologies there. Eel, four points for each that's adjacent to any fist, but only if it's adjacent to a coral. It is indeed adjacent to this fist, and it's adjacent to a coral, so I would get those points, four points. A sark, two points for each one that's in the same row or column as any fist. Um, I do not have any this way. I do have one this way, and the same one for this one, and for this one, so I get six points the whale if i don't even have any whales i didn't get any whales i'll show you that in a bit turtles two points for each row and column containing at least one turtle so i get two four six eight and then the octopus three points when played may immediately move one card or swap two cards and um so i get Three points, six points. Now, again, when I play the octopus, like it says, I could swap some cards. Or, let's just say we don't have all the cards yet, I could move one if I want. That's how that works. The whale, I can find one. We didn't see one. That's the only one we didn't see. Bear with me. I've seen everything but the whale card. There's probably not many of them in a the game. There they are. There's two for sure. Okay, there, there's about well, six of them. We just didn't get any. So if I were to get the whale card, this is say instead of this, and I play this. I'd play that there, and I would score two points for that. But I have to flip one adjacent card face down. Actually, we'll get into that. But I have to flip one card face down that's adjacent. Maybe I flip this one, which hurts because I no longer get the points for the Sark. But I do get points for being adjacent to the Quills. That's adjacent, so I guess that's adjacent. Oh, no, it's in the same row. It's not. I, I wouldn't get any for that. I would get, if I had this here, I'd get two points for that. But, um, yeah, that's the game. More or less, hopefully I explained it more or less. It's pretty cool. I do like it. Uh, and, I mean, it all kind of works. Sarks are going to eat the fish. The corals are going to go at the bottom. Because that's where they are in, in real life. And it all really fits well together and works well together. I will agree, uh, I, I, a couple of things that I've seen elsewhere, one, maybe they could have had a symbol for the fist in the corner to help identify them a little bit better, and, you know, just that could be some better symbology on it, and whatnot, and also it'd be nice, I know there's a lot going on here, but if they could have put some of this information on the cards, like in CC Go, might have been a little bit better instead of having to reference this all the time. But it's not a big thing. It's a pretty cool game. Lots of scoring pads that comes with it. Nice cards. Beautiful artwork.
I like it. I give it a thumbs up. I recommend checking it out. Check out Genius Games. I think it's not org. The link will be in the description. Thank you again to Genius Games for sending me this game. I do appreciate it. And I hope everyone enjoyed that. Check out the original ecosystem video that I did as well. And we'll see you next time for more. Thanks for watching.